Good morning, and a pleasure to see you. And I want to talk about biodiversity and the challenges and opportunities that it brings. As I mentioned, the world today faces one of the most difficult cha challenges, how to produce enough food that is good for all of us, but that is also good for farmers and for our planet. What about food that is good for us? Inadequate diets and eating habits are the main cause of death worldwide. In Peru, for example, we implemented successful policies that significantly decreased childhood malnutrition. But still, four of every 10 child, children under the age of three suffer of anemia. Four. And that's a life sentence that limits their opportunities for the future. A quarter of Peruvians are also obese and, growing at, and a growing trend that is becoming harder and harder to revert. Food that is good for the farmers. Smallhold farm, farmers are responsible for 70% of what we eat globally, yet they still represent 80% of the poor of the world. How can we enable trade that provides fair provides fair access to, for, uh, for, and, to, and benefits for these people. And third, of course, food that is good for our planet. A two degrees increase in temperature will be devastating for our food system, and therefore for humanity. More hunger means more conflict and more violence. The challenge is real and it needs immediate action. Extreme weather events are familiar to all of us. As, of us, as they pose a real risk to our, our global food system. Two years ago in Peru, we suffered the El Niño Costero phenomenon. Only a few weeks after severe drought in the Amazon, producing wildfire, we started to experience intense rainfall, followed by avalanches and rising temperatures, which affected more than 8,000 people and almost 2% of our GDP. This damage was critical in the agricultural sector, which is in Peru is directly responsible for the livelihood of more than 8 million people, almost a third of our population. Climate change is also putting smallholder farmers in peril of losing their livelihoods up in the Indian highlands. Every year, rising temperatures are forcing potato producers to find fertile soil higher and higher in the mountain slopes. But eventually, they will not find any higher soils to grow their crops and be forced to lower yields, and as a consequence, worse livelihoods. But centers as the International Potato Center are also using biodiversity to find among the more than 4,000 varieties that can withstand with these higher temperatures to give to the farmers. So agricultural bio biodiversity is as important for mankind as air, as the air we breathe and the water we drink. It is our most important ally if we want to strengthen our food systems and end hunger in the, this context of climate change and a population reaching 10 billion by 2050. It's a prerequisite for food and nutrition security. However, our agricultural biodiversity today is more at risk than ever before. For example, in the last decade, Mexico, the center of origin of maize, has lost over 70% of its maize varieties. Livestock, which is critical to, for livelihood of billions around the world, is also in danger with 70% of breeds are at risk of extinction. If we don't act quickly, this trend will become harder to revert. This is, a, to a large extent, a consequence of consumer choice. Out of 30,000 available edible plants, only 12 account for more than 20 percent, more than 80 percent of our calorie intakes, and only four account more than 
four only, account more than 60% of them. Our diets are consistently relying in less and less diversity, both within and between corps, crops. Less options not only means less resiliency, but also worse nutrition. As an international community, we have already pledged an important commitment. Sustainable Development Goal 2.5 clearly, clearly states that by 2020, we must safeguard and use this agricultural biodiversity and ensure equitable access to benefit sharing. And 2020 is just around the corner. The good news is that implementing this goal is scientifically and economically feasible. It just requires conviction and will. Safeguarding all crop diversity will cost less than 1% of the global expenditure in pesticides, and a far smaller fraction of the U.S. federal agricultural budget. This is why, two years ago, in this, in this very same stage, the Food Forever initiative was launched, a campaign to inspire global community to join the efforts of safeguarding our biodiversity and ensuring its sustainable use, with a strong network of champions and partners organizations, including politicians, renowned chefs and advocates, private sector representatives and scientists. And we want to showcase the message that preserving biodiversity is fundamental if we want to ensure we have enough nutrition and delicious food forever. Last month, we organized an event in Cusco to celebrate United Nations Day of Biological diversity. We gather most of the relevant national and regional actors, both within and outside of the food and agricultural community, to discuss ideas and ongoing efforts to safeguard and use biodiversity. The results were extraordinary. We saw mining companies willing to overcome the usual differences with the agricultural systems over water, for example, to drive conservation efforts in their areas of influence around different types of endemic or native crops. We heard a traditional food and beverage company, now present in 28 countries, say they wanted to leave their business as usual and start development of beverages with no other sugar from native species of the Peruvian Amazon. We also learn of, uh, from most of important businessmen ambitious part to develop their home city uh, in the Peruvian Andes to become the real smart city based on biodiversity. All these efforts were already in place. The only thing that was needed was a joint platform, a space to share this experience and create new projects. That is exactly what we need if we want to implement SDG Target 2.5. And this is exactly what Food for Every wishes to become. Coming, to mega, coming from a mega diverse country like Peru, I am optimistic, I say, when I say a safeguarding agrodiversity is not critical for the future, it's also an extraordinary opportunity in the present. We are now living in a natural revolution where consumers all around the world value naturally and sustainable source produce of our industrial fast food or fast fashion. This is change in paradigm means that the small agriculture high in the Andes or deep in the Amazon rainforest in my country that was always called substantial agriculture, and, they need that, and the need to be substantial support is now the protectors of perhaps the most valuable resources in my country. Each of its small plot high in the Andes has unique varieties and could be the new superfoods of the future. And we want to be part of this natural revolution, a new era that has traditional knowledge, natural wealth, and sustainable and sustainability become jointly guiding principles to transform poverty into competitiveness and innovation. And this is, of course, not only the case of Peru, but for many countries around the world. I understand the importance of promoting local, but I don't think that we should limit our global perspective of food system. For many small farmers, a local market is not enough to lift them out of poverty. They need access to the global markets. And we can offer that. Uh, things that farmers can constantly base in, uh, face in barriers to trade that hinder their opportunities for development. We are committed to promote 
development of, of these better agricultural practices, new technologies, and fair trade. But I, I encourage also countries in the developed world to rethink phytosanitary measures so they are created to protect consumers but not to stop trade. Then end this bias of treating millinery crops as nouvelle foods and ensure that the, con the consumer globally has access to healthier, nutritious food in a seasonal way. For from now until 2020, Food Forever not rest, will not rest until the message is taken to all corners of the globe. We want to engage business, governments and consumers with the importance of safeguarding biodiversity by showcasing its country and regional agricultural world. We, to this end, we are working with chefs and their innovating and talented people that can help new audiences to understand the importance of the introduction of diversity in the plate of food. For example, in Peru, uh, some of these chefs are working, engaging poor people to improve their nutrition and with diversity in diets, with programs, in TV programs like Cocina con Causa, teaching poor families in urban and rural areas how to eat, eat better with, while recognizing and maintaining their cultural tradition and heritage. Food Forever is about understanding that we are all equal, responsible for safeguarding our biodiversity, but that we also share the opportunity to understand it and use it sustainably. We are all, in, all interdependent when it comes to ensuring our food forever. All of us who are lucky enough to eat three times a day also get to vote three times a day, and we, want, we can vote three times for more diversity. Last month, the President of Peru, Martin Vizcarra, became the first head of state to sign our Food Forever Declaration of Interdependency, a document which states our guiding principles when it comes to protecting our biodiversity and our food. We now want all heads of states and government to replicate this effort. And of course, we want all of you, consumers, farmers, activists, business people, to all join us, our work, and sign this declaration. This time is running short, but together we can do it. Together we'll, we'll do an important job for humankind and give the world a success story. Thank you very much.